read my thoughts as I read hers, for we had understood the mystery of the Hyades, and the phantom of truth was laid. Then, as we answered each other, swiftly, silently, thought on thought, the shadows stirred in the gloom about us, and far in the distant streets we heard a sound. Nearer and nearer it came, the dull crunching of wheels, nearer and yet nearer. And now, outside before the door, it ceased, and I dragged myself to the window and saw a black plumed purse. The gate below opened and shut, and I crept shaking to my door and bolted it, but I knew no bolts, no locks, could keep that creature out who was coming for the young sign, and now I heard him moving very softly along the hall. Now he was at the door, and the bolts rotted at his touch. Now he had entered. With eyes starting from my head, I peered into the darkness, but when he came into the room, I did not see him. It was only when I felt him envelop me in his cold, soft grasp that I cried out and struggled with deadly fury, but my hands were useless, and he tore the onyx clasp from my coat and struck me full in the face. Then, as I fell, I heard Tessie's soft cry, and her spirit fled, and even while falling, I longed to follow her, for I knew that the king in yellow had opened his tattered mantle, and there was only God 